In this video, we're going to take a look at the types of touchscreen for IGCSE computer science. So, as technology has progressed, the need for more interactive displays has increased. So, when you go to museums now, they may have touchscreens where you can look through maps and look through um, exhibits and things like that. Your smartphones, they've all adapted and got much better at being touchscreen. So, going from just an output, essentially, we can we had some phones that had styluses, and now we have phones that have fully capacitive touchscreens. You made it for a presentation, so you might have a touch screen, so you're trying to highlight some certain points or zoom in on things. And then in school, touch screens got a lot better for allowing us to interact with our PowerPoints a little bit more dynamically and to allow us to, to use more uh, technological resources in lessons. Now, these different types of touch screens allow us to directly interact with the computer system without the need for extra peripherals. So in a museum, you don't get a mouse and keyboard on the computer where someone could maybe mess with things, change things, maybe open up the command prompt or something. You can just have a simple display up that someone can just interact with by tapping the places we want them to tap. So infrared, this is where we use a matrix, which is like another word for a grid, of infrared lasers essentially that maps out sections of the display. So this means that we can use this technology to change any type of screen into a touch screen. So without having really expensive screens, you could have essentially a projector onto a piece of plastic or a piece of painted wood or something like that, then apply the infrared lights around it and we could then work it out that way. So how it works is when the infrared beam is broken, the computer system can then calculate which area of the screen has been touched and it also allows for multi-touch. So if you touch here, there'll be obviously a lot more beams of light than in my picture. You've got to imagine there'll be millions of them. So you can touch here, it's gonna break that connection and we know you're touching around here. If you break these connections, we know you're touching around there. So it's quite easy for the computer to figure out where you're touching. We then got resistive, which is an older touchscreen technology. So some some museums and things still have these screens because they don't get a lot of funding so they can't get the, the latest and greatest uh, technology but it's where the touch screen is integrated into the monitor itself and it has like almost feels like a flimsy piece of plastic on the front that you can actually touch and push and um, sort of physically move with your fingers. Now underneath that flexible layer of plastic is a circuit. When you push down on the screen it completes a circuit in a grid much like the um, infrared screen but it's not quite as accurate because you're just essentially pushing down pieces of metal if you've got smaller fingers or fatter fingers or um, not enough areas to make the connections then it's not going to be as accurate you'll find that on older screens you have to tap around a little bit to get it to work and it doesn't support multi-touch because once you've completed the circuit it's complete it doesn't really work like you press in multiple areas now capacitive is the more modern form which your iPads or use your mobile phones will use and some modern touchscreens will as well. Like if you've got a two-in-one laptop or a touchscreen laptop you probably have a capacitive screen. Now this relies on the charges, the like, electro charges from your fingers or from a capacitive stylus actually transferring electrons to um, the inner workings which are called capacitors underneath the screen. So a capacitor is like a mini battery, um, and there's lots of in lots of electronics, there's lots of in computers. Um, but as a series of capacitors, then when you put your finger, sometimes that's why you don't actually have to touch some touch screens, you can actually just put your finger really close. Um, and what it'll do is when it's the electrons get passed from your finger, that's why sometimes they won't work with gloves on as well. You need to get special smartphone gloves. Um, but when you put your finger near them, electrons get transferred to the circuit underneath the screen which then charges these capacitors. And that allows us to figure out where your fingers are and it's a lot more accurate than resistive and infrared, but it's more fragile and more expensive to create. And they also support multi-touch. In terms of exam questions, these are the kind of things you're going to get. So we've got an infrared touch screen is used to view and navigate the supermarket stock system. So this is like an, an additional question talking about like a POS system. Uh, explain how the infrared touch screen detects a user's touch. And then we've got a nice easy tick box question. So let's look at the answers. So infrared rays or lights are sent across the screen from the edges. There are sensors that are around the screen. 
infrared rays form a grid or a matrix across the screen and the infrared ray is broken when a finger blocks the beam and a calculation is made on where the beam is broken to locate the touch. Now going through my, my explanations earlier on, if you need to require pressure to create a circuit, that's resistive. If you're wearing gloves, then it's not going to work with a capacitive. Use mostly on smartphones, capacitive, more responses to a touch, capacitive, needs an electrical field, capacitive, cheaper to manufacture, resistive. So if you don't understand where those marks came from, please rewind the video, watch it again, as those have been explained. But I think it's quite easy to grasp. I think it's quite an easy one that a lot of people struggle with. Just remember, infrared, use it on many different displays. It uses infrared lights. Capacitive, it's your smartphone one. It's more expensive. And it's, used, uh, it's based on using electrical fields coming from your finger to charge capacitors. It doesn't work with gloves. And resistive is your older technology with the floppy, uh, plasticky layer, which you have to physically create a circuit by pushing down on it. Hopefully that was nice and easy to understand. Again, if you struggled, go back through the video again, try some past papers, and I will see you in the next video.